That's we start we started mm-hmm. with the acting class stuff tonight, Therese. So um uh, Morgan has trained a, a lot of folks. So you got some some good talent in, in the room and she's been a part of not just the um acting part of the movies, but the production as well. So um you'll you'll be learning a lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what up? Look at your hair laying down. I ain't used to seeing it laid down, I'm usually seeing it big and curly. Who's that? I'm talking about you. Oh, for real? Yeah, like you got your hair slicked down like that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kareem. Hi. How are you today? Very tired. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm excited. Excited. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So if I just make it live right now, then people will start kind of coming in, coming in early. So let me Yeah, and anybody that wants to join in, you could just give them the prompt of if they're on the live and they want to come into class, depending on Morgan, if you are right with that for some more people to come in. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah they can yeah. come in anytime because I'm gonna be hitting on different points and I'll be reverting back to good stuff. Yeah, anytime is good. Awesome. So you could go ahead and, and uh, I just, share. I just clicked it. All right, let's see. Choose, choose all right, continue. Live stream me into Facebook Live. Okay. okay. All right, let's see. Connect. I just it. Go live. Boom. Okay. All right, we are live streamed. It's live? You see it live already? I do. Oh, shoot. Mine still say setting up, redirecting. Okay, babe. All right, so now I have to to mute mute Facebook or something, right? Right, I'm on mute, so you could jump on it. Uh, All right, somebody trying to mute. Um, You probably could mute folks on your side, uh, Rasheen, but yeah. Oh, I can? Let me see. Yeah, Yeah, if you can mute people. Um... And then I'll ask them to unmute on oh, different uh, um some different activities we're doing. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. All, All right. right. So, can I get a time check? We are 559. 559. Oh, All right, so let me see. How do I see it from Facebook? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you one thing. Um, you can't watch the show because you are the show. <laughs> But you on there. I see it. <laughs> ah, that's funny. You can't watch the show because you are the show. <laughs> you are the show. You Be are the crown. Now. Wear the crown. You are the crown. You are the crown. <laughs> All right, let me put a let me put the link here for people to that's watching it. They want to log in. I see. Come on there in. You there you go. Come on inside. Room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Sing it. Come hey. on in the room. <laughs> Come on in the room. That part. Oh, there we go. Come on inside. All right. We six o'clock. So we appreciate o'clock. everybody being on time. Live. All of that. We are live and getting in. Yes, we are live with Save the Arts Films. Kids on Film presents virtual masterclass acting for the camera with Morgan Flowerchild. Thank you all so much for coming. I am excited because we are talking about the art of film. Who doesn't love art? We all love mm-hmm. art. And what we have to really, really celebrate is the amazing films that we've grown up watching, the amazing cinematography that we've seen over the years from being a little, little kid up until now. And when I say cinematography, that is an art form. That includes everything from the director shooting to the the different pictures that the director is getting to the actors getting in character. It's a lot of different things. So we are going to be talking about the art of film and acting, okay? So who here is an actor? Who here has done some acting? (laughs) You done some acting good? 
Who else I got in the room with me? I got Falon here, Carissa's here, Karan, awesome. Good, y'all can use your um, emojis and I can see um, if you raise your hand or not. So theater is my background. I got my background in theater and that is my first love. It is my passion. So somebody might be like, what is she doing talking about film if theater is her passion? Well, theater is just ex an extension of film, okay? Film is an extension of theater. Theater is when you present yourself in front of an audience. So the beauty of theater is that you have a relationship with your audience. Film, you're being recorded and they watch it later. You get to chop it up, edit it, make it look really, really good with all kinds of different flavors, okay? So as an actor, one of the things you really, really have to do going from theater to film is you have to pull back. <laughs> now, when I say pull back, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be heard or your facials shouldn't be seen. It just means that everything in theater travels. Your sound travels, your sight travels. So in film, your microphone is close to your mouth. The camera is close to your face. So you don't want to ever overact for the camera or else it's gonna be unnatural. What is acting? What is acting? Um, some people might have a long elaborate definition of acting, but guess what the definition of acting is? Doing. To act means to do. Guess what? I'm acting right now. Kilo's acting right now. Miss Karen is acting right now. <laughs> acting is doing. Another definition of acting is reacting. Yeah. When you're acting, all you're doing is reacting to something that's going on in the world, reacting to your environment. Right now, I'm not even going front. It's hot in my house. So I'm like, woo. So I have to move a little bit. You can see in my body language that I might be a little hot with this jacket on, okay? I might go like this. So that is natural reaction to my environment. And so today we're gonna talk about some reacting, okay? And doing, being yourself. When you are on film as an actor, you want to always be yourself. Everyone say that with me. Be, be yourself. yourself. <laughs> now, what happens is we look at television, we look at movies and we say, I'm gonna do that monologue or I'm gonna act just like that actress or actor when I get out there to be an actor. No, directors look for you to be yourself. You got the role because you're you and you're special. So we all have this thing called our it factor. What is it? What is the it factor? An it factor is the one thing that you have that nobody else in this world has. My it factor has always been my smile, my energy. Sometimes your it factor isn't your appearance and the way you look. Sometimes it's just that you walk in a room and you just got all this energy and people are attracted to your energy and your smile or whatever the case may be. But whatever that one special thing is, you got to have confidence and you have to embrace your it factor to be a successful actor in film. Because when that camera comes on you and you say, this is my time to use my smile, my it factor, let me turn it on, okay? <laughs> hey girl, use your smile. If it's energy and they want you to uh, come in the room, hey, what's up y'all? Everybody doesn't have your energy. Everybody doesn't have your smile. Everybody doesn't have your, you may have a gap that is beautiful to a director. Sometimes you have something that you think is a flaw that everyone else thinks is beautiful. So you have to make that a part of your it factor and work it and rock it, okay? That is a part of your confidence. So when we talk about acting, we talk about confidence. If you're gonna step in front of a camera, you gotta be able to watch the playback so you know what you did wrong, what you need to fix, how you're gonna grow as an actor, 
And that comes with relaxing in who you are and being confident in who you are. So part of my relaxation as a film actress, I relax by being quiet. Some people pray, some people meditate, some people take out their crystals. Whatever it is that you need to do to relax in who you are, that is what you need to do. So we're gonna practice some breathing exercises because it is very important that you know that in your voice, in your mental, in your core, that you are getting ready to turn it on. And when I say turn it on, you are getting ready to get into character and have that confidence when the director says action, okay? So what I want you to do is just shake it out. Shake out your arms, shake out your hands. If you're sitting, you can sit and do this as well. And I want you to inhale through your nose and exhale out of your mouth. Inhale through the nose, exhale out of the, of the mouth. This time when you exhale, I want you to say, ah, inhale, exhale, ah. Oh. That is building confidence in your voice. That is your most important tool in film because the audience has to understand the story and who you are and what you're going through. What are your obstacles? What are your goals? They know that through your dialogue. So any conversation you have with other actors on set in a movie, that's gonna be called your dialogue. Make sure you're writing some of this stuff down because I want you, I'm gonna be asking y'all some questions, okay? All every, right. every wanna, and look, everyone wanna see their faces doing some yes, of the exercises. So please turn your cameras on. We wanna see you. Um, if you have disturbances in your background or something like that, I understand, but we do wanna see you because we're gonna be doing some, some cool acting stuff, okay? Now, articulation. I'm big on articulation having a theater background, but guess what? Denzel Washington will also tell you this. Theater will make you great for film. Theater will make you great for film. Why do you think theater will make you great for film? Why would a theater actor be ready for film? What do you think, Mr. Rashid okay. Kilo? I would think um, confidence because if you were if you wasn't scared to stand in front of a whole audience full of people, then you'll be more confident being in front of a camera and a few people in a room. Awesome! That is one of the reasons that theater makes you great for film is confidence level. Also, when you do theater, you have a level of discipline where you have to stand and wait for the curtains to open. You have to rely on the other actors to know their lines. If they don't know their lines, the director can't go back and cut it to make it right. If you mess up, the director can't go back and cut <laughs> your mess up. So it really is a lot of discipline in theater. So if you have the opportunity to do any theater to prepare for a film, please take every opportunity to do theater because it's gonna prepare you for film. Now, when you're doing theater, everything is bigger. It's more exaggerated because I'm in the audience and, my, I'm, and, and the actors are on stage. It takes a lot for me to be able to get the emotion. So everything has to be exaggerated, including their voices. So in, in film, you don't have to project as much. Projection means the, the uh, volume of your voice. Articulation is important in film because you want the audience to understand what it is that you're saying. Even if you're speaking slang, even if you have an accent, dialect, Southern people all the time, they're like, what did you say, Morgan? I'm like, why can't they understand me? Because I have a New York accent. So sometimes I'll go to the drive-thru and I'll be like, can I, can I get a bacon, egg, and cheese? And they're like, what? <laughs> can I get a cup of coffee? Whatever the, the, the dialect is that you have, you have to make sure that it's coming across on screen very clear. So you all are gonna do some articulation exercises with me. 
because I want you to be confident in your voice. Being confident in your voice is very, very important when filming, okay? So I want you to inhale through the nose and then you're gonna repeat after me when you exhale, okay? Here we go, inhale. A-E-I-O-U. A-E-I-O-U. I wanna hear y'all, y'all can unmute, y'all can unmute. Here we go. Unmute, oh. I'll give y'all a second. Here we go, inhale. A-E-I-O-U. A-E-I-O-U. Awesome. Inhale again. Whether the weather is cold. Whether the weather is cold. Whether the weather is hot. Whether the weather is hot. We'll be together, whatever the weather. We'll be together, whatever the weather. Whether you like it or not. Whether, Whether you, you like, like it, it or not. not. Excellent. So that is an exercise that I like to utilize to work on my THs, my woof, 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 not. Because a lot of times when you have an accent from a different side of the world, you can twist up your words when you get on set and be like, ah, can I do it again? Mr. Director, Ms. Director, I messed it up. Can I go up? Do your warm ups so that you can articulate when you get those lines. Even if I have a Southern accent, I still have to articulate my lines, okay? If I'm like, yo, what up dog? What, what's up? What we doing? What's popping tonight? I still need to be heard because it could come out as mumbling. So having confidence in that character includes the voice and making sure that you can be heard, okay? Try one more with me. Repeat after me. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. Let me unmute everybody. Here we go. Okay, okay. Here we go. Start it again. Ready? Yep. The lips, the, lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the, lips, the teeth, the, teeth, the, the tip, tip of, of the, tongue. the tongue. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. The, the tip, tip of, of the, the tongue, tongue the, the teeth. teeth. The lips. the lips. Nice. Now we're going to put all of that together. Lips, teeth, tip of the tongue, tip of the tongue, teeth, the lips. Here we go. Repeat after me. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. Yay! Say that again. I, forgot, I said, I forgot it at the end. I was like, the, yeah. <laughs> right. So that's also a great memory exercise is to know all of so a lot of warm ups and just do those before you are, you know, when the director says 15 minutes to places or what, when you're getting ready to film, start working on opening your mouth and making sure that you are articulating your words, okay? Projection, not so much because what happens in film, you have a boom mic. So when we shot, it takes a village one, it takes a village two, it takes, a, oh, let me, hey, claim it. It takes a village three, um, <laughs> find my way. All of these films, the kids had boom mics over their heads or behind the camera. So the boom mic is picking up your sound or another camera is picking up your sound. So projection, natural voices is so important. What's the difference between a natural voice and a theater voice? Natural theater. Natural would probably be just talking in a regular volume and theater would be projecting like, yo! <laughs> exactly. So right now my students are working on Shakespeare and to be or not to be, they have to use that diaphragm and get the, get the sound all the way to the person in the last seat of the audience. But in film, we're gonna have sound, we're gonna be able to pick it up through a speaker. Then when it plays in the movie theater, it's gonna be another speaker to pick up your sound. So natural 
having a natural conversation is your natural film voice, but make sure that you're confident in it. So that's why we did the relaxation warm ups and the articulation warm ups. Okay. Any questions? Anybody have any questions so far about relaxing, confidence, the it factor, articulating? Great. So we're going to be moving forward because we're going to talk about why movement is important. We just talked about the voice. We talked about being comfortable in who you are, your it factor, what to sell the audience, because you're selling a product. When you put yourself out there to the world, you are a product, just like Pepsi. <laughs> I'm, I always use Pepsi because so many people drink Pepsi and Coke. So it is, you are a product and people want that. What do they want, okay? So when you think about your character, what is a character? What is a character? Anybody could raise your hand with your emoji or just Let start somebody speaking. else. Somebody else answer that. What is it? What is a character? What's a character? A role that you're gonna play in the film. A role that you play. The role that the actor is going to portray. The word portray means to become. You have to become somebody else. This is not your story. It's not your dialogue that you use every day. It's not your plot. These aren't your life goals. These aren't your obstacles. This is a character. My name is Morgan. I'm going to portray this character named Lisa. Lisa has goals in life. Your character has a goal. So knowing your character has a goal, they have an entire life. What made them want to pursue this goal? Now, only the writer knows all the answers, but that's the beauty of being an actor is that we can create what the writer didn't write in the script. And so when you think about, if you look at the paintings behind me, and I use these paintings all the time as an example of a white canvas turning into whatever's on the inside of me. And I'm here to give it to the world. I just paint on the white canvas and I'm like, here world, take it, it's out. <laughs> so when you get a script and you love this character, you read the script and you're like, this character is so fun. This character is going through so many different obstacles to get to their goals they wanna achieve. Where do you create that backstory for that character? Some of the information about the character's backstory is gonna be in the script written by the screenwriter. A lot of it has to be created by you, the actor. And that is why acting is an art form because you get to make the creative decision to play the character like this versus like this. You get to decide if the character went through something during childhood versus going through something in their adulthood or something that just happened. So what is the character's favorite color? How does the character treat the other characters? How does the character stand? How does the character's body posture affect who they are? or what they've been through affect their body posture? Do they have a limp? Do they have a lazy eye because something happened to them? All of these things you get to create in your imagination. <laughs> I love it because a lot of actors think they have to act like someone else. But at the end of the day, when Mr. Rashim calls you to do a role, and he says, I want you to play this part. He's looking for you to bring something to the table, take some creative risks. We wanna take risks in life. Sometimes they're not great risks. We're like, oh, this is gonna get me in trouble. But a creative risk is never wrong. A creative risk is never wrong because what you're doing is giving the director choices to choose from. Oh, she did it like this in this shot. But in this shot, she did it like this. I like this one. I'm a yeah, I'm a I'm a chop this one in there. So when the director goes back and said, do it again, do it again. You're gonna have to do it a hundred times sometimes 
so that the director can make a choice and say, man, I want to get some more. This is a great scene. So that's where theater comes in, where you're in rehearsal, standing for hours. This person doesn't know their lines. I know my lines. I'm ready to go. But you, your discipline and your work ethic when you get on set allows you to keep going. And that adrenaline is like, ooh, he's giving me another shot to do it. I'm going to try it like this now because there is no right or wrong. When I painted these canvases, I don't think this is wrong. I got to fix it. It's like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. this is how I feel. Let me just go. Okay. Right. So if you feel something, let that go on camera and it's going to pick up on the lens and once the director and the editor go back and look at it and they say the twitch in her eye right here just lets me know she's a little cray cray and we want the audience to know she's cray cray at this point because she done been through some stuff okay so think about that that is called a character analysis don't forget that what i just explained was a character analysis where you analyze your character also, Question. yeah, I wanted to just, you just made me think about when we were casting for It Takes a Village in the classroom and mm -hmm. we had the kids, I think you had about three or four kids come up and everybody did the same exact thing. We gave them like a sad scenario. Yeah. But, this, but when this girl came up, Deja, she started saying the same sad lines and the whole room got sad. Just yeah. by her energy. Her energy was that powerful. All right, yes. I, I just thought about that. Thank you so much for that. Because that is exactly what a character analysis is. And my, my imagination is not going to be the same as this actor or the, the other actors next to me. So when I walk in front of the camera and I turn it on, what does it mean to turn it on? Become the character based on your character analysis. Sometimes I do a character observation. So an analysis is where you analyze the character. What do they eat? What are they vegan? Because if they're vegan, it's going to affect their energy and the way they move and their skin and everything about them. If they eat grease all the time, they're probably going to be a little sluggish and, you know, they're not really athletic. So you have to think about little things about your character, okay? Where were they coming from? before the scene started. If my scene is with Hakeem and I'm supposed to meet Hakeem on the basketball court and I just came from another basketball game. Woo. <laughs> Woo. What's up Hakeem? I'm gonna be tired. It's gonna be different than if I came from a birthday party to meet Hakeem. <laughs> Hey, what's up, man? I just came for my little sister's birthday. Yeah, it was all that. It was, it was fun. I had a good time. So your energy is going to be different depending on where you're coming from and before the scene started. Never start a scene not knowing where your character is coming from. It's going to turn your performance into a believable and natural performance. But you have to believe that you are the character and that you're coming from somewhere else. Because if you don't believe it, the audience is not going to believe it. That's where your confidence comes in, okay? So make sure that you really, really know who you are, your character, and observation. Observe people around you. When I observe people, yes. Look, look, not a, it's not a question. I'm just, I'm just vibing with you. Look, yes. I was, I was thinking about when... When we were doing it, takes the village again, the first mm -hmm. one. And we said, you know what? Let's let them be them. Let them be natural. And it goes to the to the line where you say acting is reacting, right? Yes. And when we were sitting there watching the kids talk and we were filming them, and, and somebody was like, turn up. <laughs> we was like, what? Is, what? what? <laughs> yeah. But it was so, it was them just being them. It was that natural reaction to what was going on and it right. really made it authentic. It was like, and I looked at you, I said, I couldn't have wrote that. Right. I, said, it, I couldn't, it, couldn't have wrote that. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for saying that because that is observation. That actress, that young actress that he's talking about, 
she thought about what she does with her friends when they're sitting at lunch. What are some of the things that I would say? It's okay to put it out there because we could always edit it out. Right. It doesn't have to stay there. Sometimes we we look we look at the footage and we're like, what? Like, uh-uh, we gotta take that out. Sometimes we hear something and we're like, ah, that was great. And it wasn't scripted because it's just natural human reaction. Okay, very, very important that you really find the natural reaction. So observation is when you observe people around you, okay? Observing people around you means what did someone do that related to the character that I'm portraying in this movie? I remember portraying a 1930s club singer and I reverted back to my grandmother who grew up in the 30s. And I did my hair in these finger waves and I had to develop a alcoholic, an alcoholic um, persona. So do I drink to find out what it's like to be an alcoholic or do I observe an alcoholic? Some actors actually go through what it feels like to be to be in the, in that character shoes. Some just watch people. I remember being a part of a play about homeless, um, and we also that was also filmed. And so I went out to Wendover Avenue in Greensboro, and I slept with a homeless person over there, or over by uh, Walmart. I stayed out there, and I wanted to see what it was like to be on the street. So it made my, my um, experience real because I observed what was going on around me and I analyzed at the same time, okay? Anybody think they would do um, observation? Anybody prefer, think they would prefer observation or would you prefer to actually be in the shoes of the character? To try To try being in the shoes. I would rather be in the shoes. So I kind of respect you for sleeping with the homeless people. Uh, but, you know. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And, and those are two uh, methods that actors use. And there's a third one called emotional recall. This is very, very important because it is something that actors in film really, really have. Well, if you put those two words together, emotional we know is feelings, how you're feeling. Recalling something means going back, to go back into the moment. Or when you experience a time that you felt something, sometimes they will revert back to a time that was very traumatic for them to help them get that emotion out and make those tears real it's something that some actors prefer to do sometimes they will try in front of the camera and it won't come out so they have these um fake <laughs> fake tears for actors um uh, to, to draw tears from the eyes, it's similar to an onion or like a very strong peppermint smell. And they put it next to your eye and it, it helps. I personally prefer to draw natural tears. I prefer for my actors to draw natural tears. So having that conversation with your director or just yourself on set saying, okay, I have to really center myself. It may hurt. It may be a hurting moment. It may be a happy moment. Some people, trust and believe, some people have a hard time showing happiness. Seriously, some people have a hard time showing happiness naturally. It's easier for some people to cry than it is for them to show happiness because they've been through so much, okay? So depending on who you are, your life experiences, that is why actors get paid millions of dollars is to be themselves and to be natural and recall different things that have happened to them. And that's when emotional recall is gonna bring me to inflections. Y'all, inflections is my favorite thing to talk about in film because we're human. And when you're human, 
you react to things as a human should, as a human would. So if somebody tells me, you look a mess, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna say? How do I react to that? Guess what? A piece of you has to jump into the character because you don't know. That character might say, you look a mess. Depending on who you are, you might say, what? But I didn't do anything to you. Why did you just tell me I look a mess? <laughs> I look a mess. Did you see what you have on today? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? So different characters are going to react differently. So let's try this exercise. I'm going to say this line to you and I want you to react naturally, okay? Oh, you're going to pick a person? Yes, or volunteer. Okay. Anyone want to volunteer? Any volunteers? Don't be scared. Who's volunteering? I volunteer because I can't stay on too long. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm going to give you a line, Russell. And I want you to respond how you naturally would respond, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. So I heard you was running the streets talking about me. Yeah, I was. Good, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it was. laughs> so that is going to make the other actor do what what does the other actor have to do my he's character. got to respond he's got to respond i'm open, gonna have to react and so an open so question you think it's cute. Open right. right so you think it's cute running around the streets talking about me so what well, exactly you, did you say well were you going around i'm gonna talk about hey, no you. cousin <laughs> <laughs> so those emotions that we feel as humans come out in film. This is I a clean class. This is a I clean class, man. Like, you don't scare nobody. I, this is why I talk about you. No, just... And that is real, real acting. That is putting yourself in the character's shoes and reacting. Look, now, so what now happens get... if you can't? But get now, let him be a a, a softer character. Yeah, okay. we're gonna try, we're gonna do something different. So now you're gonna do something different with that character. Guess what, y'all? Reactions aren't always words. Sometimes a reaction is a look. Sometimes it's a a sigh. We don't know. So let's try something different this time. All right. Same line, okay? So I heard you was running the streets talking about me. Look, man, I don't want no trouble. I ain't really say much. <laughs> I don't want no trouble. What Excellent. we need to do? Excellent, yes! <laughs> yes. Uh, look, I was Sorry, looking at I'm looking at this, look, I'm looking at this. <laughs> I'm looking at Faye Lauderdale. They cracking up over there. For real. Because I'm over here like, what? <laughs> so the beauty of that is that you can do it the way he did it the first time. You can respond angrily, depending on who your character is. You can respond truthfully and be a blunt person. Yes. Uh, what do you want me to do? I mean, yeah, you run, you, you, you out here being crazy. So, <laughs> you're talking about it. so you have to really, really dig inside yourself to say, I'm going to take a risk this time. Do you have to show anger when you're angry? Do you have to show anger when you're angry? No. No. Why? Why are you shaking your head, Carice? What do you think? Well. Anger can be shown in a lot of ways. Like sometimes people laugh when they're angry or if they're nervous and sometimes people cry when they're angry or, you know, people cry when they're happy. It doesn't mean that that person is necessarily sad or upset, you know? Yes. Like, yes, ma'am. Yeah. 
And that is where the beauty comes in film is you never know how the character is going to react to a situation. You never, the Joker, if you all have seen the latest Joker, it was very, very interesting the way they showed the character's backstory and how people used to tease him, which made him a killer. People used to tease him and treat him bad because of his, his laughing disorder. So you never know, you have to know why a character is the way they are. Why did this character become this way, okay? You have a goal, you're gonna have all these obstacles come in the way of you achieving your goal. So we're gonna do this next exercise. I'm gonna give you a one, a phrase. I'm gonna give you all a phrase and everyone has to participate in this. And I want you to take one emotion with this phrase and I want you to deliver it however you like, but use your imagination and be creative in the delivery. And then we're gonna create a backstory for why you said it that way, okay? The phrase is, I love you. I love you. Take a moment to try some different things. You can mute yourself and try some different things. You can do it in your head. This is all in fun. There is no wrong answer. <laughs> so you saying only use those three words? Yes. Oh, that's easy. Ready. Only three words. Mm. And volunteers. I'm I'm ready. All right, <laughs> go for it, Russell. Yeah, go girl, for stay it. ready, girl. I stay ready. No. <laughs> I love it. Be like this. All right, let's hear it. I love you. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Now, what was the emotion behind that? <laughs> Looking at a sexy woman. Okay, do you know the woman? Oh, I know plenty, but yes. Uh, <laughs> you are the <laughs> ideal. I mean, it's just like you said, it's an emotion. An emotion yes. really doesn't have a particular name to it. It's an emotion. So, awesome. So you want me to get into that? Mm, that's what I'm thinking about. A good loving moment. About a good, what I'm looking at. I think, gotcha. I think she wanted you to give that girl a backstory, though. <laughs> well, it's not well, the yeah, backstory. I have y'all been out on a couple of dates? Are y'all have y'all been in a long term relationship? Did she do something nice for you? Well, she can make. Well, I tell you what, the backstory would be when you say, "Not you." It would be the smallest things. It could be something as far as just rubbing my neck, squeezing my booty, shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's something like that. That gets me to say, you know, when a woman touches you a certain way, say, "I'm not." So yeah, it's it's the. I love that. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. That is that was beautiful. Um, all right, who's next? Phelan, let's go. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, I love uh, you. Yes. All right, so wait, say it again with those emotions so Morgan can see. Yeah. I can't hear it. Can you hear me? I can now, yeah. Oh, the volume is not up. Oh, okay. How about now? Yes. Yeah. That's better. I said, um, I love you. Ooh, interesting. That one sounds like I don't know if I love you. I think I, I don't know. What I so think about when about I just that. said that is um, if somebody there, they told you that and they're like, or it's a group of people and somebody in that group told you that and somebody else was like, well, what you gonna say? <laughs> Ooh, yes, that's a great reaction because you don't know. Some another another actor might say, I love you too. 
and be looking crazy. Like, I don't even know if I do. I'm just saying it. Right, if somebody, right, right. Or Ask it's just the two of you and, he, and somebody says, I love you. And you're like, he's like waiting for you to say it too. And he's like, well, what are you, what, what are you going to say? <laughs> right. Excellent. Love it. Love it. Yes. <laughs> Next. Carice? No, that was mine. That wasn't yours. <laughs> mine was a question. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mine was also a question. No, yeah. Okay. It might have a different backstory. Oh, you said, you said. I said. I love you. No, I said, <laughs> I love you. Like I don't. That, yes, it is because I don't. I don't understand. Like how to. Little different. You said it differently. I promise you. Bro. Look, that's yeah. a scene right there. Look. Yeah. <laughs> a scene right so there. So let me get your delivery again, Carice. Oh. Uh, the way you just said it a minute ago. I'm gonna say it to Ampu. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about that emotion tell us about that emotion that you that you felt in that delivery i love my dog <laughs> like and an look, I, it's as simple as that did something <laughs> happen before you said the line for you to tell to tell your dog that um no he was just looking cute perfect and that is a reaction sometimes <laughs> Look at our pets and we're like, oh man, this looks so cute. I love you. I know. So really? that's natural reaction. Excellent. Who else we got on here? Miss yeah. Tasha Cruz, would you like to give it a try? Tasha, are you there? I I'm here. Oh, there she I would Hold love on. to hear your, your creative delivery for I okay. love you. All right. I love you. Okay, tell us about that. Tell us the backstory of why you said it that way. Because you're blinded and you can't see that I love you. Ooh. I, I heard a little anger in there as well. Yeah. It's more mm -hmm. like children think. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I yeah. saw a change. If you saw a change in her face, where did you see the change in her face? In the beginning. In the beginning, where? What features? Eyebrows. Um, I, and it was a, it was forceful. Our eyebrows when we're angry. Mm -hmm. And her her body shook too, like forcefully. Yes, it was like a um. So think about your facials. Your body language is gonna do some different things when you deliver a reaction a certain way. Um, Karan, Karan. Quran. I don't know where he at. <laughs> okay. Miss Karen, did you want to give it a try? Okay, he's fixing his camera. Miss Karen, are you there? Did you want to do the I love you line delivery activity? She, she probably something else. All right, okay. I got one. I got one. All right. so, I got one. Oh, yes, yes. Give one. All right, let's see. love you good you know what that, that was and then he busts out into laughter that <laughs> was the character because you saw him jump in it and then he jumped out of the character and went back into rasheen which is really dope so tell us about the delivery and why you del that character delivered it that way that was a, a toxic domestic violence type of uh relationship where the guy he's saying he's saying he love you but he mean as heck and you can see that he's like there's no love in it right i don't know if y'all have ever saw um what's love got to do with it but when ike said 
if you die, I'll kill you. Mm. Like what kind of <laughs> deranged, right. that, that juicy Lawrence Fishburne stuff, crazy stuff that he does internally when he observed Ike Turner. He had to portray Ike Turner, not Lawrence Fishburne. Right. So he had to observe Ike, have conversations with him. Ike might have told him, I say, hey, I did say that to Tina one time. If you die, I'll kill you. Right. That's crazy. You had to let, he let the audience know right there, right then and there, I'm crazy and I'm in love with this woman. I'm crazy in love with her. You see what I'm saying? So if you're going to portray a character and react to something, portray and react. Portray and react. It's very, very important that you make it natural. Never exaggerate, never over exaggerate because then what happens is the audience gets out of your world. The idea is to keep them in your world by including yourself into who the character is. It doesn't mean change everything about yourself. It means a piece of you has to be inside this other person's body. And as crazy as that might sound, it is art. It, if you've ever seen Basquiat, I want everyone when you get off of here to look up Basquiat's art. It's B-A-S-Q-U-I-A-T. Basquiat's work is so different and unique that it, yeah, it made people go, what? But at the end of the day, once people research why he did it that way, it, it, it made people say, I can relate to him. I know what he's going through. So sometimes you know what's going on on the end and the audience doesn't. But once you continue with that story and the movie is going on and on, they're eating that popcorn and they're like, that's why she said that the way she did to him because he did her like that back in 97. Oh man, I feel you, girl. Right. right. So they relate to you. And when people can relate to you, guess what they do? They fall in love with the character. They fall in love with the character and they follow the story. And that's when they say, I need to see another movie with Falon Sneed or Carice Mack or Karan Pugh. I need to see another movie because they made me feel what that character was going through and I'm going through the same thing right so no one believes you uh, let me watch something else what else is on this movie is not even real I don't even know sometimes y'all have seen movies where you don't believe nobody and you know what it's a, it's amazing that you say that because one I'm person huh what you say <laughs> I said some of Tyler Perry's latest stuff. <laughs> what is that? It's... No, some of the characters are not realistic or the oh. plot is not realistic. Right. Sometimes oh. the way the writer writes something is not realistic to where you just like, I don't even want to do this script because it is, I wouldn't even say that. <laughs> it's a, it's um, amazing. It's amazing how one character could throw a whole movie off. One, yep. one character. I remember when when I was watching uh, Coming to America Part Two, mm -hmm. and I was I was like I had expectations. This is about to be funny. I know it's gonna be different because they can't tell the same story twice. Blah blah. blah. And it was like I was like this watching it, and it was the boy that played Eddie Murphy's son. I just mm -hmm. couldn't believe him for nothing. It was like I was like, oh, this is not his son. He, he he's not. This can't be his son. It, I just couldn't get in the character. And he was throwing the whole movie off for me. He was just throwing it off. And it was a good movie. But I was like, I was like, that one dude, man, that one actor. <laughs> right. Oh, you can and have one actor where they they make you hate them. Like you hate their girls. Like I hated Danny Glover and Color Purple. Ooh, oh, yeah. right. I saw him yeah. the weapon and I lose him again. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. That's a great example, Falon. Like, that is exactly 
what great acting will do is make you love the actor in, in one thing and hate him in something else. Um, Steve Harris, I believe is his name, in um, Medea's um, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, how he did um, Kimberly Elise, and then, you know, she threw him in the tub and all that. Are you hungry? <laughs> and she flipped the script, but she was so sweet. Oh, you know, honey, no, please don't leave me. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Then once he couldn't walk and do things for himself, now I'm in rage. I'm about to throw your butt in the tub. I ain't going to feed you. You about to see, you know? So yeah. you just think, what does she have to go to to go from that to that? Yeah. 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 And we're all, everyone in this room is capable of creating those characters once you so get a good about, um have y'all seen um Charlize Theron and Monster? Yes. That's the most, she's like one of the most beautiful women in the world. And they yes. cast her as this serial killer. Right. So <laughs> these are all world. examples. If you haven't seen these, uh, Mont uh Monster with Charlize Theron, please go watch it. Um, Halle Berry in Losing Isaiah, where she had to play the mother who was addicted to crack. And you're like, Halle, yeah, well, she, you know, it's like, you don't want to see her like that. And you, I'm, I'm an actress and I'm an artist, but watching Losing Isaiah, I was like, Halle, come back. Because right. she that real. I felt for her losing her son. You know, it was, it's so heartfelt and real. We have we all have those actors and actresses that we are inspired by and that we look up to. And they all use these methods that I talked about today, emotional recall, observation, character analysis. Sometimes you will be blessed to get a role that's exactly who you are. <laughs> um, prime example, it takes a village part one. <laughs> It takes a village part two, except I don't have a child. I don't have a son. So I literally had to look at my mother and how she was with my brother when like my brother, you know, got a girl pregnant. And I was like, okay, my mom acts like this. I need to, you know, pull this emotion. But as a teacher, as an educator, I was like, I can relate to this. It was very much who I am. Cheryl Alexander in Find My Way, if you watch that movie, it's a director that's really like, oh, give me this and give me that. What are you doing? Like, come on, everybody. So I'm like that to a certain extent, but a lot of it I had to pull from watching Debbie Allen and watching these other women, strong women directors. Like, how am I going to portray this role when I'm really a nice director sometimes? So I had to grab from different places. It didn't come from one place. Okay. So we have. Another exercise we're going to do, can I get a time check? Uh, we got about six minutes. <laughs> okay. So you are going to get a dope script. Sometimes, sometimes they're going to say, we ain't got no script. We just like you. We think you got the great look for the, for the part. And they're going to say, go at it. Here's the scenario. This is the part where you and old girl get into an argument about the, the, the dude or you know, she's the, she's, she's, um, your daughter is getting ready to get taken away from you and you got to talk to the social worker. Whatever the scenario is, you have to literally create the dialogue. That's called improvisation. And sometimes the director will get some improv in order to get the natural reactions that are not scripted. So we're going to try a scenario. Okay. I just kind of gave it to you. Um, do I have two females that would like to try this scenario? <laughs> or I can use a male too. I can. Faylon and Karich, you want to try it? I'll go. Is that Tasha? Yeah, I'll try. Okay, Tasha. And I need one more volunteer. Tasha and Faylon, go ahead. All right, here we go. So Tasha, this social worker is coming to your house to take your daughter away because you have been on drugs and they found out, this, this government has found out that you are doing some drugs in your house and 
you have um, your daughter has been slipping in school. And so the social workers has, is now at your house telling you that they have to take your daughter. Okay. But is it a true story or is it, or either I can just make it what I wanted to make it? You can make it what you want to, want to make it. Okay. So that's all I'm giving y'all. So who is Faye Lawrence? She's the person coming Faye in. Faye Lawrence is a social worker. Oh, you're the social worker. Okay. And Tasha's the mom. Okay, ready? Action. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Cruz. I apologize, but I am here to take your daughter. Turn your mic on. And who are you? And, and you're taking my daughter where? I'm because you just said you're here, here and you just said you're here. Services, and I've been instructed to come and pick up your daughter due to in, uh, inappropriate behavior and drug abuse by your by you, the parent. Inappropriate drug. And you got this from where? Um, we are not able to disclose who reported you, but we're here to pick up your child. But you're standing at my door telling me you're here to pick up my child and I have no clue as to what you're talking about. Over a drug, what? what? Ma'am, are you are a you drug addict? She's on drug are or drug am I on drug? It's been told to us that you've been abusing drugs and have put your, your child in danger. Abusing drugs. Okay, so what is your definition of abusing drugs? And what kind of drugs are you actually talking about? What kind of drugs are you using, ma'am? What kind of drugs do you use? Well, I do have thyroid medicine, but other than that, that's the only thing that I do know that I could be taking that is a drug. So <laughs> what drug are you actually talking about? And scene. Good job. Excellent. <laughs> So the reason I wanted you all to hear improvisation is because naturally what happened in there were moments and beats. What are beats and moments? A beat is where you take a pause to get to your next thought. Sometimes you might have to take a moment. Like if you heard Tasha, when she heard drugs, she was like, um, what kind of drugs? A moment is going to be a longer pause where you change your emotion or you're going through some things in your brain like, oh man, what am I? I mean, it may be a sigh. It may be an eye roll. It may be a, <laughs> a chuckle. A moment happens where as humans, we don't know what we're gonna do sometimes. We don't know what we're gonna say. So all types of things happen. Girl, you are the most beautiful woman in the... Here he go with that slide talk. Sometimes it's just a... Mm -hmm. And that is those beautiful things that the camera picks up that make it so real. Where we're not oh. speaking sometimes. Go ahead, Rush. So let me, let me say one thing. As, as a cameraman, what I would suggest in that type of uh, scenario, that scene, I would say, Phelan, stop smiling and get to the point of getting that girl. You ain't there to explain her drug stuff. And then I would say, I would say, Tasha, focus on your daughter being taken. You ain't taking my daughter nowhere. I don't care what you're talking about with no drugs. You ain't taking my daughter nowhere. It ain't about the conversation on no drugs. Y'all ain't, she's there to do a job and she has to focus on it without explaining anything to you. And you focus on, you ain't taking my daughter nowhere. Now let's try that one more time. That's the goals. Go after your goal. Just Ready? <laughs> so let's do that again. Let's do that one more time. That's our last thing because we got our time now. Let's get it. Let's, let's go out with a bang. Come on, y'all. Turn up. And action. Turn your mics on. I'm on. 
situation where we found out that you are using drugs in the home so we're gonna have to take your daughter using drugs in the home <laughs> you gotta take my daughter take my daughter uh, where yes i need to take her to our next of kin to maybe a family member because it's i don't think it's a good look for her to be in the house with you using drugs you know what i think where she is is fine and this is where she's gonna stay no, I think that uh, uh, I don't care what anybody tell you. You have not seen me do any drugs, have you? Well, then she's not going to go anywhere. Well, you're a little irate right now. So I, I think in your attitude and your actions, you're, you're showing me that you may have been a little, you know, maybe using something you want to rethink. Oh, oh, really? Somebody shows up at your doorstep telling you they're going to take your daughter and you're, you're supposed to smile about it. No, my daughter's not going anywhere with you. I don't even know who you are. We're just worried about, you know, the safety of your daughter at this moment. And okay, I don't know I am if too. out of your house. Do you have she, people coming in and out of your house, buying drugs, sent, giving you drugs? Have you seen anybody in and out of my house buying drugs? Have you, you seen know, anybody? I'm just going to come, come with me. Come. No, we're no, we're not going anywhere. We're not going yeah, anywhere right now. You have to come no, with me we're today. Not, we're not yeah. going anywhere right now. It's a done deal. You know it's a done deal. The authorities are outside. We're gonna go ahead and make a move. Yeah. If you want her to go anywhere, you're gonna have to call the police. And cut. The way she's going <laughs> See, you know what? So you know, you know when it got real when the when the voices overlap each other. That's right. What you see what I'm saying? When you say, well, you're going to come in and I ain't going nowhere. You're going to go to, no, I ain't. No, no, no. That's when you know it's like, it's the climax. Right. The climax. And as you can see, with Rasheem giving the actors direction, that's going to happen so much. They're going to give you direction on set and you're going to have to change your emotion or change some words or the way you re you're, you're reacting. Different cameras are going to get different reactions. So that was awesome, uh, Tasha, how you took that direction and you change your, your, even the rate, your pitch, and your inflections did something different once you got directions from the director. So excellent. Last point I want to make: never look in the camera <laughs> unless you are breaking the fourth wall for because the director wants you to. We see Will Smith do it all the time, and he looks and you know does a little smile. Um, but your fourth wall is the wall that is in between you and the camera, which is the camera I look at as the audience, being a theater person, um, starting in theater, that when you break the fourth wall, you totally get out of the world of the film and the atmosphere and what's going on. The audience is gone. They're like, oh, she looked in the camera. I don't even wanna watch this no more. Very, very important to stay focused and keep your fourth wall up. Because once you get in that mode of focus and this wall is up and they don't exist and the camera doesn't exist, you're in there. Turn it on, get it popping, become the character, use your it factor, but be in, use your character analysis, your inflections, your beats, your moments, react and do and just be. If you just react, be and do, you will be a successful actor in film so i want to thank you all so 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 much for being here today i'm morgan flower child you can find me on all social media platforms um if you have any questions about today 
If you need any resources, please let me know and I will do my best to get those to you as soon as possible. And I wanna thank Save the Arts Films and Kids on Film Program for inviting me here today. You have just experienced a virtual masterclass with Morgan Flower Child on acting on camera. Thanks everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Morgan Flower Child from Flower Child Productions. Hey. <laughs>